Hello and welcome to Murphy's Garden and you join me in the vegetable patch. Um, it's a lovely time of year because we're starting to pick some of the crops that we've been growing. So all the hard work that we did back in the spring and over the winter is starting to pay off because we're getting the rewards. Um, pick some, got loads of um, rhubarb, um, which I'm going to take in in a minute and um, lots of other things. We've been picking the black currants, um, Josh and I, this morning and we've got a massive tub of black currants and um, in fact we've barely we've barely got going the bush is still absolutely laden so there's a lot more still to pick but the other crop that's very prolific are the courgettes so you can see this courgette plant just next to me um, I grow loads of courgettes I grow I think I've probably got about five plants and um, that produces a lot of courgettes so people ask me why do you need so many courgette plants and what do you do with all the courgettes so in this video I just want to show you what I do with them because each one is um, treasured and is used and I just want to show you what what it is I do with them so of course you can use um, courgettes um, just lightly fried and that's just quite a nice accompaniment to lots of meals and if you do that the best size to use are when they're just little like that they're absolutely lovely at that size and you could put them in risottos um, or just serve them as a side vegetable you can use the flowers you can deep fry the flowers there's lots of recipes online to do that and we've done that in the past um, we've even made cake there's a courgette cake that you can do um, with, there's also a ricotta and pine nut courgette tart um, recipe that my sister gave me and that was really nice but all of these recipes require a little bit of work and um, a little bit of time which if you're like me and you're quite busy with work and everything else sometimes because the courgettes are producing all the time you don't always have time to, to, to make something a bit more complicated so uh, this recipe I'm going to show you is just something to do that's very very quick you can freeze um, freeze it once it's made. It will last um, in the freezer for winter and we, we use it for soup or winter and we also use it for pasta sauce. So it uses the courgettes um, to make a very creamy tomato sauce. And if you're growing tomatoes like I am, when you get to the point where you're producing loads and loads of tomatoes, you can use the fresh tomatoes. But if at this time of year, um, your tomatoes haven't really got going completely and any that are coming through they're quite precious I don't really want to use them all up so um, I just use passata and canned tomatoes um, to produce this at this time of year and then when I'm getting lots of tomatoes I'll use the fresh tomatoes which will probably make it even more delicious but it's delicious um, with the passata or the tin tomatoes and the nice thing is if you're growing herbs you can add basil fresh basil if you, if you haven't got that then you can use dried or um, chives anything like that that you're growing can be added and that's really nice Another good thing is if you've got children who don't really like eating vegetables then this is a really good way of getting some greens into them without them knowing if you can be a bit sneaky as a parent sometimes it's um, quite quite good. If you've grown courgettes you'll know that they produce loads and loads of courgettes and I picked lots of courgettes on Thursday night. I went away um, on Friday, Saturday morning and I came back on Sunday and there were some really big courgettes that had got quite big so um, it's just incredible and if you have rain then um, you go out one day and there aren't any and then you come back the next day and suddenly these courgettes appear so they, they're really they're quite miraculous in how quickly they produce so if you're producing kind of six or seven courgettes a day then that, obviously that's quite a lot of courgettes so this recipe uses them up and it's absolutely delicious. Just show you my courgette plants. I think I've got, I'm growing butternut squashes alongside and they're quite difficult to tell which are which, but I think I've probably got about five courgette plants. I've just planted another one today. So I had one in the greenhouse that I wasn't going to use and I thought, oh, what the heck, I'll just put it in the ground. So that's gone in. In fact, it's gone in where our failed pea crop um, I've kind of given up on the peas I don't know if anyone else has had this problem with peas this year but I just haven't I've got just about got them to Germany and then they've been eaten I think the little sparrows have been pecking at them so I've kind of given up on the peas now so I've put another courgette in its place because that will work I'll just show you my little courgette patch and butternut squash patch I think these are butternut squashes at the back and then the ones at the front just for ease of picking are near the path so I've got one, two, three, 
four, actually I've probably got five and then I've got another one I've just planted where the peas are. So yes, I've got quite a lot and you can see that there, that one's got one, two, three courgettes on it. I've just picked from that one, so just picked about three, three there. So what I do when I'm planting them is, um, I'll show you, these ones are getting quite big, so I'll show you on this one. But when I plant them, I, I sort of plant a kind of trench, a circular trench around each plant by forming these kind of trenches that when you water, um, it forms this kind of big puddle around the plant so the water doesn't just run off, which I find it does um, if I don't do it like this. The other thing I have done in the past is just sink a, a flower pot into it so you can just fill the flower pot with water. That's another quite, quite a good way. Um, but that just really helps and particularly for us because we're on incredibly sandy soil so you might not have a problem like we do but um, I find this is really helpful. And it's better to water less often, just water once a week and really puddle it in thoroughly rather than water a little bit every day. So I'm now in the kitchen and I've got um, five courgettes, two of which I've started to cut up and I've got two onions. So I just begin by preparing the vegetables, chopping them all up. Begin by melting some butter in a large pan or you can use olive oil if you've got any dairy intolerance and then um, simply add the chopped vegetables to the pan and um, just let them cook slowly in the butter. If you want the sauce or the soup to be quite hot, then you can add a chilli um, just to spice things up a little bit. And then add about a tablespoon or two tablespoons of turmeric to the mix and stir in well. And next I add about two tablespoons of flour to the mix and this is just to thicken the soup or the sauce up a little bit. If you've got a gluten intolerance, then you don't need to add this, just omit this and stir it in well and this will just soak up all the juices. Next add the stock and I usually add about two litres of stock and be vegetable stock or um, meat stock, whatever you've got to hand. Um, if you want to freeze this um, soup or sauce then add less stock because then it will take up much less room in the freezer and you can always add more when you're using it. Then I add a can of tomatoes and follow this with a carton of passata. Stir it all together and then just leave it to cook slowly, just to simmer um, until the vegetables are cooked. Vegetables are cooked, then simply use a stick blender just to blend until smooth. So serve the soup um, with a splash of cream and perhaps some herbs on the top. Or alternatively, you can add some more vegetables, perhaps some mushrooms, um, some fresh tomatoes and olives. Um, and serve with any type of pasta and it makes for a really quick and easy midweek dinner. So um, so also has the advantage of being really low in calories. You don't you can add some cream cheese if you want to make it even more creamy, but to be honest it's quite creamy already. The addition of the courgettes to the tomatoes makes it um, somehow makes it really really creamy. So we have served it here with salad from the garden, bread that Joshua's made. Um, lots of parmesan cheese as I said and we've even got a few um, berries from the garden too. It's a really hot day today and the courgettes keep on coming. I've just picked another six this morning so although it's not really soup weather it's too hot for soup but making this recipe just means that we've got masses and masses of lovely um, soup in the freezer for when the nights start to draw in and winter comes and we can still enjoy the produce from our garden all winter long. So thank you very much for watching and join us again in the next video. Bye for now.